Welcome to Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop with me, your host, Cool Dude Clem. Okay, it's time for a new episode of the Amplifier Adventure 2 in Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop. But I thought before I'd start, I'd show you the effect of wiring up a capacitor the wrong way around. Now, this capacitor here, as you can probably see, has literally blown its top. If I turn it around, you can see it's bulging quite badly and the stuff is leaking out. But I had no way of actually telling which way around this capacitor was supposed to go because, as you can see, there's no label on it. So I just thought I'd wire it up and hope for the best. And as you can see, well, obviously I put it in the wrong way around. Even though it's being fed the voltage through this small resistor here, you can still see the effects that it had. You might even be able to see that the, not just the top of the can, but the sides of the can are bulging a bit as well. Despite the bad condition it's in, it still seems to be doing its job. Obviously not as good as it once did, but this capacitor is part of a power supply for a microphone preamp I have, and what it does is filter out all the ripple, and I'm using that power supply and that microphone preamp right now, and as you can hear, no ripple, it's still doing its job. But I am going to replace it and then get on with working on the amplifier. Right, I've built one of the amplifier circuits now and it does work, although I've had to make a few little modifications. When I first fired this thing up it did work, but not properly, so I'm just going to give you a little demo of it now. And then I'll talk you through the modifications I did. I have it connected up to my trusty Denon DRM600 cassette deck here with a C120 cassette in there. Which really isn't a good thing, but, you know, because, you know, those tapes can get tangled and everything. But this seems to be a pretty good tape. And it's also connected up to this speaker here. So. Let's hear it in action. So I think that's a pretty good test that the thing is working. Now let's go through the little modifications that I made. Now originally to adjust the voltage of the base on this transistor here I was going to use a 1 mega ohm potentiometer and if you look at my original plan you can see it was going to be connected to the ground and the other end was going to be connected to the positive via this 220 kilo ohm resistor and the wiper connected obviously to the transistor's base. But unfortunately, I had to set the resistor so high that the wiper was starting to leave the carbon track and make contact with the, um, well, contact with the contact. So I did a little bit of experimenting and finally came up with this solution. I put a 100 kilo ohm resistor here between the base of that transistor and the ground. Don't know if you can see that, but there's a 100 kilo ohm resistor there. And also connected that transistor's base to the positive via this 10 kilo ohm variable resistor here and these two resistors here. And the reason I used two is because I found out that ideally a 110 kilo ohm resistor would do, but since I don't have any of those, I made one from two 220s. And with this, I can fine tune the bias and have it exactly the way it needs to be. This meter is connected to the output and when I adjust this knob here, you can see the voltage changes, and when I've got that to exactly half of the supply voltage, which in this case is 6.1 volts, I'll know that I've got this thing biased exactly. And for those of you interested in what the actual voltage at the base is, you can see here it's 634 millivolts, and when I adjust this thing, you can see the change is very small. So that's about 634 millivolts, which is what I'd expect from a circuit like this. Now another change I made was, instead of connecting the bases of these two transistors together with diodes, I used an LED. And I do have a good reason for that. You see, the voltage of the base of this transistor must be a little bit lower than what the base of this transistor is. 
And the actual difference in the voltage is very important because if it's too low or too high, you won't be able to set the bias properly because one of the transistors will always be over-biased and one will always be under-biased and you'll get a thing known as crossover distortion. Now diodes are a good way to connect the two together because the voltage you get out of a diode is always a bit less than the voltage you put in and this is known as voltage drop and I found out that the voltage drop across the LED is exactly the right amount for this circuit to work. Now with everything being so precise in here I have ended up making this thing very very efficient. In fact so efficient that I'm not going to need the two resistors to connect the output of the two transistors anymore. If you may remember I said connecting a couple of resistors between the output transistors lowers the quiescent current which is the amount of power it takes when it's just idling. Well I'm not going to need these two resistors in the circuit anymore because if we look in the meter you can see it's only taking 13 milliamps when it's idle. And if we look at the two resistors, you can see they are connected together, so they're not actually in the circuit anymore. So all I need to do now is build another one of these, and I'm going to build it onto the same board. And I'll see where we go from there. Well, it's a little later on, and now I've completed making the amplifier circuit. You can see I've both amplifiers are here. I've only got one of them powered up at the moment. You might be able to see the LED glowing slightly. Just providing some gentle background music. It's quite late, so I won't, haven't got it up too much. But looking pretty good. And that's it for now, so until next time, goodbye.